Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us. I can't thank you enough. Ooh, today we got another spicy one. I thought I'd give you something good for the weekend, start you off right. You know, I know you've been relaxing and now it's Sunday. You're like, ah, let me just cool down, get ready for the work day to start or work week to start, really. And here I come with some hot, spicy stuff for you so you can enjoy and have it twirl around your head while you're sleeping. So the title for this one is the X-Men Hellfire Gala is not for old fans. It's for the new fans. Your old fan support, is it needed or matters? That's right, I said it. Marvel does not need or even think you matter anymore. So, for what I'm talking about, some of you saw this. Uh, this came out uh, Wednesday. And really what it was, was a moment to show out, basically, all the outfits that are going to be in this upcoming gala that they've been pushing like crazy. And Colossus has gotten a lot of, I mean, a lot of popularity off this. I mean, people love this. Okay, so let me put this aside for a second. So also I want to call out um, <laughs> the folks at Thinking Critical for being upset about this coming out and this whole situation. And, you know, when it first came out, I read it. I, well, I can't say I read it. I looked at it, and I was like, what are they doing? I don't get it. I really don't understand what are they doing. What are they trying to do? And I really sat down and thought about it for a while. I thought about it and thought about it. And then I just noticed the story kept popping up and popping up and popping up. And then it hit me. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm so stupid. Marvel is doing this to attract fans. Now, a lot, a lot of you are like, well, this is a dumb way to attract fans. It's so stupid. I don't understand. But hold on for a second. Let's let let's talk this out. Let's really think about this. Really, you know, get your personal feelings out of it. Yes, I know. It's not your X-Men. I don't care. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about why would Marvel focus their marketing this way? If, you know, the fans would be an uproar and screaming about it like that. But like that's it. That's it. See, back in the olden days, people said, you know, any advertising you get, doesn't matter good or bad, is good for you. And this hasn't stopped today. Everyone was talking about this whole Hellfire Gala, including seeing it on Entertainment Tonight. Now, I'm not a smart guy, but I know that Entertainment Tonight and all these entertainment shows in general don't cover comic book related stuff. But they covered this. I mean, it got more press. I've seen more things talking about this in places that it shouldn't than I have seen in a long time. I'm kind of amazed at how much stuff is being talked about for this whole thing. It's just, it just is amazing to me that so much is being talked about. And that's the thing. And that's when it clicked on me. Because I'm like, oh, I get it. I get it. This isn't for me. Don't get me wrong. I've been in collecting comics forever. But this doesn't really appeal to me because I couldn't figure out, like, what are they trying to do? And then I thought back to a lesson a buddy of mine taught me a while back. And this is one of those things I got to give credit where credit is due. Several years back, uh, the owner of Tate's Comics here in Lauder Hill, if you haven't been, it's probably the best comic store I've ever been to in my life. I mean that legitimately. Whatever store you've gone to is not as good as Tate's. Sorry, just isn't. And I know you're like, what are you talking about? Trust me, if you've been to Tate's, you know what I'm talking about, but... Let's put that aside. A couple years back, Tate was building upstairs to his comic book store. And, you know, I know Tate pretty well. I've worked for Tate, and I've been a good friend of his. And I, he's telling me, he's like, yeah, I'm going to put upstairs, I'm going to put a gallery upstairs. And I was like, what are you, stupid? Like, he's, like, he's like, you're putting a gallery upstairs? He's like, yeah, I'm going to put a gallery. I'm like, well, comic gallery? He's like, no, just art, art gallery. Just art gallery. And I'm like, wait, what? wait, I don't understand. Like, why are you putting an art gallery up there? Because that's what I want. I want to put an art gallery up there. And I was like, and I thought in my head, and I, of course, spoke it. I'm like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. There are no people who have an art gallery in their comic book store. Why in the world would you have an art gallery upstairs? He goes, oh, it's a great idea. I think the art gallery is going to be really cool. It's going to be some really great art up there. And, like, you'll get local artists. And I'm, and I'm still trying to understand, like, why does, what does it have to do with the comic book store? This isn't, I don't get it. This is stupid. He goes, trust me, it's the best idea, trust me. And I'm like, you're an idiot. I think this is a, oh my God, this is a horrible idea. This is going to fail. This is going to fail huge. So the <laughs> the art studio museum gets put upstairs and it starts going. 
And I'm just thinking like, oh, this is such an act. And it's, it's a great, they had a nice grand opening, very nice. But I'm still thinking like, this is the dumbest thing ever. Why, why would he be doing this? And then I noticed something. I know seeing different people come to these art shows. I've never seen them come to the store, but come to the art shows, and they bring a lot of people. And they have, you do like one a month. It'd be a topic or something like some local artist, some comic related thing, something cool, something different, something to get people to come out. And then it finally hit me, you know, like three or four months in. I'm like, oh, it's not an art gallery. It's a marketing piece. I'm like, what? It's a marketing piece? Yeah. He's using the gallery to put on art that's very unique and very different to draw a different type of clientele to the store. Because let's be honest, he has a comic book store. It's well known for being a comic book store. But it also carries anime. It also carries games. It also carries toys. It also carries lots of interesting art books, um, manga. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a whole cornucopia of that whole corner stuff. And this and Tate store, if you don't know, is about 10,000 square feet. So it's a huge, I mean, it's a huge store. So this was going on. I was like, oh my God. He wanted to get new people to come check it out and use different ways to advertise his store by sides just saying it's a comic book store. Because literally down the street, not even a, maybe maybe a mile, but I'm being, no, it's probably half a mile down the street. Tate had a competitor there, a competitor store, half a mile down the street. How many people can say they have a direct competitor to their comic book store less than a half a mile away? And we're not talking a small store. Well, to make it even better, the competitor, I'm not going to mention the name because of other stuff, but the competitor actually was in the old location Tate was in. And when he go, and when people would come to his store and ask, hey, is this Tate's? Like, oh no, Tate's, Tate's went out of business. Yeah, so whatever. Let's, well, that's not important. What's important is Tate figured out he needs to bring different type of people to the store to get interest, to get excitement about it to talk about it to promote it and let's be honest fans are going to be fans we're going to be fans we're comic book fans we're going to sit there we're going to talk be like this is the greatest thing ever yay we're, we're just going to talk to each other but doing stuff differently brings a different crowd and this little book brings a different crowd now you're a lot of people are saying well i don't get it Lewis. what's the crowd they're trying to bring well honestly when i really looked at this i thought about it, it was like these are cosplay ideas these are 100% cosplay ideas. Let's think about it. I mean, they're formal gowns. They're outfits that are distinctively different. It's basically a fashion show. And let's be honest, most fashion show people probably wouldn't read comics. But they do like fashion shows. And comic books could tie into that. This is, this is the equivalent of tying in rap music with something that you wouldn't think with. My, I'll tell you about a secret of mine. For years and years and years, I've been fascinated with tennis. I'm, I've never played tennis. I think it's an interesting sport, but I also think it's a sport that you could make very popular in urban areas because of a couple factors. And people are like, dude, tennis in urban areas. Yeah, hey, I'm talking like, you know, I'm, doing, I'm using urban, I'm using black, but we say urban. Because Tennis is kind of like basketball. Basketball, all you need is one ball, and you get the moves, and you can play. And you can play anywhere. Tennis, boom. You get a court. You can fake a court. You put, and you hit it back and forth. You get a racket and a ball. Boom, you go. And the best racket, of course, costs a ton of money. But, you know, you don't have to have the best. You have a racket. You figure it out. You figure out how to play it. I've always thought if someone had any kind of brain power, they would mix up hip-hop and tennis. Because the potential for tennis to become a big urban sport is huge. Now, a lot of people say, well, tennis is already kind of big. But look, I mean, you've got the, the world's, one of the world's, well, not even one of the world's greatest players is a black woman in this area. The next one up is a half black, half Japanese girl. Now, if anyone's got any kind of brands and you're putting on any kind of tennis event, if I was you, I'd find a way to tie in hip hop with tennis. And a lot of you are like, you're crazy. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, that's the same thing I said about Tate, too. You're drawing in different people who can make tennis, not the hoity-toity thing that it is, but this cool underground, you know, oh, you don't know about tennis, but this is where it's at. Because you already got a black woman who's killing it. I mean, listen, killing it in there. It doesn't take a lot of money, per se, to put together a tennis, but it does. But it doesn't. It doesn't. You got a court, 
boom, put up the, you can put up a line, you can do, you can, trust me, dudes put up milk crates to make for hoops. So this is nothing different. Whoever figures this thing out, and I'm, I'm hoping, please, Lord, I've been good. I'm hoping someone will figure this out, and if it's me, thank you, Lord. I've been maybe not that good, but thank you. That someone could start doing these kind of tournaments and giving that hip-hop flavor to them and adding that aspect into them, and then you turn it into something different. Someone's going to do that. Someone in Smart's going to do that. I, I hope someone watches my video and says, hey, Lewis, that's a brilliant idea. I want to help you with it. I want to give it. Please, please, please. I think this is a winner, and they're doing the exact same thing. Get different people involved in your stuff that you can expand it to more people who get more interested. Now, a lot of people are saying, well, why would they be interested in comic books? Comic books still are stories. We're still telling important stories. We're still telling personal stories. They may like this thing. And this way, you get some fashion people who are into this. And this is kind of cool. What if they become comic book fans? What if they promote it? What if they make better looking costumes? What if they design an art show that you have at San Diego Comic Con? That they do a model thing. More people, more entertain More people... More interest, more reporting, makes us more popular. Now, don't get me wrong. We're already pretty popular now. We've got the world's greatest movies. But let's stop just thinking. Expand it. Expand your mind bigger. Think about how much bigger this could be. Sounds crazy, right? Well, that's what they're probably doing. Marvel's looking for ways to expand it. Now, a lot of you guys, now don't get me wrong. A lot of you guys are, are upset with this. And trust me. A lot of outfits, I'm like, why would they put that? I would never wear that. And that's right. But they're not. Remember, this isn't for me. I'm an old guy. But I'm a smart marketing guy. So I know what this is. So I got to respect the marketing they're doing. So think about it. Not everything you see is what you think it is. You'll look deeper. So for all you guys crying about, you hate it, you're going to stop buying Marvel, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we all know. Come on. Let's keep it real. This isn't something you're going to like. You're going to watch it. If it does well, they're going to do it again. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But I'm not going to begrudge Marvel for trying to get more people into reading comic books because the numbers are low. The numbers are low. We all know that. And these numbers need to get higher because if they don't, they're going out of business. Or at least comic books as you know them are going out of business. So now it's time to try anything because those numbers are low. And if you can get somebody who is a fashion fan to start reading comic books to find something cool, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's let's find a way. Let's get more people involved in comic books. Because that's all I care about. I love reading comic books. Look up there. I love reading comic books. I just want more people to get the excitement I get out of them. And maybe they can find something cool they can do with it that we never thought of and make it more popular. And I'm all I'm all for that. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll talk to you all later. Hey, thank you for checking out my channel. Do me a favor, check out my other videos. And if you like what you see, subscribe.